In my last vlog, I was just leaving Braganza to come down here to central Portugal for my next house sit. This is very different after being in those mountains. So this is very flat, um, farmland, flat. Yeah, very different. Um, so I had a week's house sit here. I wouldn't normally come so far from one location to the other for just a week's sit, but I needed to be down in this area because I needed to go to Coimbra for my driving license exchange. Right, so as soon as I am going to be standing here outside IMT waiting for my number to be called for probably a very, very, very long time, I thought I'd take this opportunity to just say, wow, how this has changed for me. So when I first came to Portugal, I was in Coimbra and I'd come down this street. Oh my God, it's completely different. There's people, there's cars, the bus station, the train station. I have not experienced a lot of Portugal, how it truly is, because, you know, it wasn't that long ago that everything started to look normal again and people started to come back on the streets so i need to start all over again i've got a year's catching up to do right that's it i've had enough i'm going home i've been here three hours and the number my section my code my number has not moved in three hours so it's number five and i'm number eight my phone's run out of charge. I haven't got my earphones. So I'm coming back. Right, that wasn't too bad. I now have my temporary driving license. It's definitely better coming in the morning and getting in the queue just before they open. So it's exactly three hours in all, but it's all done. Now, fingers crossed, I don't have to wait a year for my driving license to come through the post. The other thing I was able to get done well here was sort out my camping gear. So that's the tent, that's the stupid huge pump. That's my single uh, mattress bed thing. That's nothing to do with it. That's my kitchen stuff in there. That's my ground sheet and that's my bucket. Oh, and I've got, um, I bought this. Oh, see, look, even that's part of the stupid pump. That is my little shovel, and that's like a little rocket stove thing, which I haven't tried yet. I'm sorting out my car. Now, I had put my, I had took the seats out of my car and put them in storage, in my shed, rather. But the mice um, got to them. So... My friend has kindly said I could store them at her place and um, I think I'm going to take them out again because I don't need them and um, they're just weight that I don't need to be carrying around so I might as well have the space. The other thing I want to do is my doors have this little, um, what's it called? storage bit and like if you put anything in there obviously it'll just fall out so what i did was i found these little tiny mini cute cargo nets in the um chinese shop so i just put it on there so it's a really good i literally use my doors as storage it's a really good nice space to keep things so i I only had one there. I finally found another one, so I'm going to put that on that side. And then it makes my um, car like a little van. I've got all that space. 
Right, so that's done and it just means that I can, this is a lot more useful and I can get a lot more in there. The other thing I want to do while I'm in the comfort of a home is really test this out. I got this ages ago and it's just, it's quite heavy and I just carry it around. But it's a bit, I don't really like it. I mean, I've heard good reviews, but hmm. Yeah, anyway, I'll explain why. Right, so I'm going to see if I can cook my soup in here. I've, um, what one is that on? It's on normal for 15 minutes. And we've got, oh God, look at the output. Well, that's a lot until it gets to pressure. 671 watts going out. Oh my God, it was 80% a minute ago. I don't even think it's going to cope and 45 oh going in okay so i think it's just um power then that as it's getting to pressure oh no it's gone off no i don't know see i don't get this this is supposed to be a thousand watt so i don't get it doesn't work can't cope Right, I'm now going to see how long this takes to charge from zero to um, using the panel. So I've got the unit in the shade because it's not supposed to be in the sun. And this is a sort of cheap no-name panel that someone's lent me. And um, I've been trying it at all different tilts and angles and um this one seems to be the one where i get the most which is about 74 watts i think it's 70 now but i think it was 74 watts before no matter how much i tilt it i haven't been able to get it over i think 76 was the most it went yeah all the different positions i don't know if a 100 watt panel can really do 100 watts maybe in perfect conditions but anyway we're at 70 around 70 and we'll see how long how long that takes to charge i reckon it's going to be a long time right let's have a look it's been charging for three hours now let's see what we've got No idea until you when it's charged. Okay, so it looks like we are at 40%. Uh, it's been three hours. Let's, um, it's putting in 45 watts at the moment. Let's reposition this round a little bit. Right, I've now repositioned that to give us 67 watts. Have a little look, see what this does. 68. Oh, 71. Seems to like it up a little bit. We get 71. Let's put it up a little bit more. Right, that seems to be our ultimate angle at the moment. So let's leave that for however more longer it takes. Right, we're at it again, having another go and um we've got it the output is currently 688 watts because it is just um building up to pressure and we have an input from the solar panel of oh you really can't see but it's 62 watts and that's the panel just propped up against the plant put there while that's cooking, I'm just going to go and do a bit of gardening. I'm going to, these poor little fruit trees are in this long grass. So I'm just going to clear a bit around them and give them water. I'm 
another thing I don't like about this, and yes, that noise is the noise the power adapters are making, is I don't, there's no instruction, so I don't know what red means. It seems to always be red, um, and I never know when it's charged, so that is now flashing. I don't know if that means it's 100% or it's still charging at 100%. I have no idea. Let's see what happens if I turn this out. So when I take that out, that is um, says it's hundred percent. So I don't know why the colour of this light doesn't change because it started off red. So yeah, I never quite know when it's fully charged, but it looks like it is now. Right, so this thing just packed up on me yesterday. I really am not getting on with it. It's 100% charged. So this little mini Instapot is a 700 watt um, device. And um, this is a thousand watt. And yesterday I turned this on and it just, it just cut out, it just stopped. So I I don't get it. I don't know what this draws because when it's coming to pressure, it uses a lot of power and then it kind of stops. It uses less once it's at pressure. So I don't know, I don't, so I don't know on the different settings. Well, I should, I'll be able to see when I turn this on. I'm just gonna use the keep warm function today. I use the keep warm function for um just for heat see doesn't doesn't work it just keeps cutting out when i use it on this so that's what happened yesterday i thought yeah it just cuts out every time i try and use it on here so just to show and demonstrate, let's put it on the main. See, look, as soon as I take it out, so let's put it on the mains and then it's fine. Just will not work on this power oak. And that's what it was doing before. Completely, I don't know. I don't know, I have to keep experimenting, but I can't risk this happening when I'm out. I mean, obviously I'm practicing in the kitchen at the moment, but I can't risk this happening when I'm out with no other power source and I need to cook my dinner and I get very hangry. So that's not a good thing. Right, I am now going to try and cook something that should take eight minutes. I've given it a head start by starting with hot water. So we'll see. Um, let's have a look. So it's, we are going to be on eight minutes medium. Let's see, it's on 100% fully charged. Obviously it doesn't draw nearly 700 watts at, for eight minutes because it uses a lot of power to get to pressure. Once it's got to pressure, it doesn't. So we'll see. I haven't got time to stand here and watch it. So the camera is on a stand and I will leave that and see. managed to um, cook for eight minutes with the pressure cooker and it's only at 60%. Now why didn't it do that before? I have no idea. Anyway, this low means that um, whenever it's finished its pressure cook time, it just goes to low and 
keeps your food warm for 10 hours until you turn it off. That is a result. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened before it shut off. And I mean, it's not even, it's on low. It's not even drawing any power. Just to prove that it definitely did go to pressure okay. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. That means I can cook at least one meal with a full charge, possibly two. Right, I'm on a roll now. I'm determined to work out what's going on with this. I've cooked my butter beans, so I'm now going to cook my brown basmati rice, which also takes eight minutes. And as it is at 60%, this should just about cope with, this is another thing I don't like about this. This is just so difficult to get, it is so hard to get the plug in the socket. Really, really hard. Let's turn this off. I don't like doing things when things are on. So, you know, I don't want to force it, use too much force. It's so hard to get in the socket. Right, that's obstacle number one. So, as you can see, as soon as you have a power source, it isn't on, but it always displays off. Right, I've just boiled the kettle so that we are starting with hot water again because then it will come to pressure quicker so that we're in the same scenario as we was with the other eight minutes so we um did eight minutes it was at 100 percent. it's now at 60 percent, so it should be able to do another eight minutes on the same setting let's see Right, all good. What have we done? Ah, so we're at 40% and I've cooked twice at eight minutes, normal pressure, which is absolutely fine and enough for a meal. It means I can do my, it means I can do kind of everything really. Yeah, chuffed with that. And so I'm deliberately talking about um, how long I can use my instant pot rather than talking about kilowatt hours, wattage, input, output, because that doesn't mean anything to a lot of people. It's about what you can use and for how long and what you can actually do. Right, so it is 9 p.m. That cabin is nearly 40 degrees centigrade inside. It's 38 degrees. And, um, oh God, yeah. So, needless to say, I will not be staying in it. It is absolutely unbearable. There is an aircon unit. It turns on, but it doesn't do anything, it doesn't work. Uh, so yes, I am going for a walk because there's no way I can stay in there. I doubt if I'll get any sleep tonight. And um, yeah, some you win, some you lose. Right, just doing a little bottle fill up here. This is nice in Avo. It's a lovely river beach down there. Right, the N17 is quite a favourite road of mine. I think I've featured it before. That is the um, na National Park and the um, Sierra de Estrella mountain range. And this is the first time I've been round the northwest edge of it 
and I, it's really lovely. It's very green, as you can see. Well, obviously, I'm pointing the camera towards the um, the national parks. It's not you're not going to see pine and eucalyptus trees. So it's really nice, and the area around is um, quite agricultural. Now today, along the N17, um, about. 30 minutes north of Oliveira de Hospital, there's been emergency vehicles and fire engines. Oh, I must have seen about 30 of them going up here today. Do we have a fire? Now this, even though apparently the whole of Portugal is classed as a high risk, fire area but this now but this is or would have been a low risk fire area but it looks like there's something blazing over there This one certainly looks like it's lessened from yesterday, I think. Although yesterday I was looking at it from a different angle. That fire looks well under control. The um, planes have been going over and um, that is looking a lot better. Look at this old man. Look at, oh look, look at this old man. Hello. He's so lovely. He's so lovely. Hello. I didn't know you, that was going to be your response. Hello. He's a big boy. He's a very big boy. Aren't you? Look at these two, they're having a right good play. It's the coolest morning we've ever had in weeks. So they're enjoying the pool. And, all right, oh God, you're going to make yourself sick the way you're drinking that water. Right, it is so relentlessly hot that I have come so over there we have Castelo Branco and then we have um, Fundal over the back there. And um, I've come up here to have my morning cup of tea and go for a little walk because the mornings are the only time you can just escape the heat. Oh, such a beautiful morning and cool. Right, I am, oh what a cute little olive tree. I am just up right on the crest of the mountain, on the Gardenia mountain range. And I thought I'd give you a little YouTuber's geography and a little bit of um, perspective for you to get your bearings. So over there, that big mountain, height there is um, Monsanto. We have <clears throat> Val de Prezeras there, that uh, village, and um, I will just behind this um, hill here, we have Albertina, and um, but I'll put when i was a little bit further up you could see it so i'll put that um footage in i'm not sure what that town is but anyway <clears throat> excuse me 
So this is obviously Castella Branco over this side of the mountain and on the other side is Fundal. So we've got where Cindy is over there somewhere. We've got um, somewhere in Castella Branco, you've got um, over there more, you've got um, the O&B of, um, oh my God, what's the matter with my brain? Indy, the Indy Project, you can see the big lake there where Ken and Gina are from OK Portugal where Jasper and um, from the Portugal project and um, Molly and Alex are I do not know but they're over there somewhere you've got Nick from the Portugal project just behind as I said behind that hill in um, oh god they all begin with a what is it Al Alpadrina then over here so that's the Castella Branco district now on the other side of the mountain we have um, Fundal district but and you can just see through the trees there the town of um, Fundal and then somewhere um, you've got Joe from Farmer for Fun, he's um, not far from Fundal. And uh, we have um, Alcans, it's just down there through the trees. So that just gives you a little bit of, um, well, I hope, a little bit of perspective and you can get your bearings a bit. There's a deer. Look, he hasn't seen me. not a very um, alert deer. Deer, now you see me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thirty minutes to fill this IVC tank. Right. Okay. Right, you're probably going to pour water yeah. on me now. You can move out the way. Okay. Now we've got some very happy pigs. Yeah. Look at those sun rays. Why are you looking at me? Hmm? And you, what do you want? Animals everywhere. <coughs> what? What? What do you want, lampshade? Wow.